Hello everyone, this is Crow77. We're bringing you something a little bit different today. I was recently invited to do a guest lecture on positional play for the Ricci Nomi group in New York City. So we did a video capture of that, and I thought I'd just share it with you guys as is. It's a little bit longer than normal, but otherwise it has about the same format as everything else. We added in a little bit of audience participation, so that's where the extra length comes from, but overall it's about the same type of content as I normally produce. So if you'd like to take a look, feel free and enjoy. So I'm going to introduce our brave first lecturer, Jake. So Jake is here from Ricci Mahjong Columbus, and he is a circus performer turned engineer, as well as a crusher Mahjong player. He's been playing for 13 years. This year, he reached out to the competitive circuit to get involved. And also to mention, he's the winner of yesterday's Ricci In tournament. So huge thank you to Jake for kicking us off. And Jake, I am going to pass it off to you now to begin our first lecture on positional play. All right, fantastic, Claire. Thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate everyone showing up for this. Today, uh, we are going to be covering positional play. Um, obviously, I made this specifically for you guys, so you're getting the sneak peek as opposed to having to wait for YouTube later on or anything like that. Uh, but without any further ado, we are going to just get started into this here. So first off, let's start with defining positional play. Um, I know a lot of people here think, or might think, uh, you know, position and think rank and that sort of thing. And well, if we're thinking about rank, we always want to be first. So that's a position in play that I need. That's all I need to worry about. Um, in reality, that couldn't really be farther from the truth, though, and what we should be looking at in the Mahjong game. My take on this is that positional play is a somewhat nebulous concept that exists mostly opposite expected value play, also known as EV. Now, just for the sake of completeness, EV is looking at the potential outcomes of a hand and deciding what to do based on the most points expected to be gained. This is what most people would call just normal mahjong, a kind of run-of-the-mill, not really worrying about position or anything like that, just kind of playing your hand to the best of its ability. One of the simplified examples we can look at for this sort of thing is that if you look at your hand and see two routes to go, one of which offers a 25% chance of completing a 5,200-point hand, and the other that offered a 50% chance of completing a 2,000 point hand, you'll generally want to go for that first option. Even though it only has a 25% chance of winning, you do have a much higher payoff at the end of the day. So overall, you'll end up making 1,300 points over the course of the game for the first example, versus 2,000 for the second, or sorry, 1,000 for the second. Now positional play, though, it kind of throws all that maximizing right out the window. And instead of worrying about maximizing, we're going to look at what we need to do to either improve or defend my rank. Sometimes it'll make sense to throw away even potential Yakuman hands in order to play positionally, and it all just depends on the context. Um, so without further ado, let's look at a graph that I made. Now, I made up most of this on the spot, so don't think look at this as some kind of statistical basis or anything like that. But it just kind of shows that the blue line here is your expected value play. Throughout most of the game, we'll be playing just for that and not worrying too much about positional. But as the game goes on, positional play becomes more and more important, and it's something that we're going to want to keep an eye on, especially in South 3 and South 4. So most of the positional play you'll want to have kind of in place at the start of the hand. Um, that is, start of the hand in either South 3 or South 4. There's a few things to consider, and this is just kind of a summary of what I want to cover today. So first of all, we want to look at the point situation. So looking at how different we are from other players, um, leftover reach sticks, and even Dora. Uh, Dora is a very important one to take a look at, and I'm told that as a club you guys are focusing on that even a bit more right now, which is great. Um, next of all, we want to look at how fast our hand is. We'll cover that a little bit more in the next couple slides here, um, but speed of the hand is almost as important as the value of the hand in a lot of cases. Next up, we want to look at that value. Uh, it's a little bit difficult sometimes, especially when you first start playing, to understand exactly what the value of your hand is going to be, but learning to predict that value will allow you to play positionally much better overall. And lastly, we're going to take all those three things and kind of sum it up as an objective, and that objective is positional play. It's what we want to do with this hand at this time right now. So first, point situation. The reason we need to have a full grasp on this situation is that we need to know what kind of hands we need to build towards in order to improve our rank. This means generally if you're, say, 5,300 points down, the last thing you want to do is build a 5,200 point hand and finish short. Conversely, in the same situation, we don't want to make a mangan when you know, there might be a honba in the center of the table, which would increase the value of our hand overall. We need to account for all those points in the center and focus on exactly what we need. Now points aren't just numbers on the table. Lead play, especially things like Ricci Out that Claire mentioned earlier, will aggregate scores and apply a 30 to 10 UMA. And that's a much, much different animal compared to something like Tenho, 
where only your final placement matters. Mahjong Soul is kind of a hybrid of the two, even. It has a little bit of an Uma involved, but rank is really emphasized a lot there. And lastly, as I mentioned, we still need to know what the door is. I know I mentioned that on the other section here, but it is truly important. Um, the more Dora you have in your hand, the easier it is to have that point situation. For example, if you just have a pair of Dora, that's an automatic 5200 point hand if it's closed, or 3900 if it's open. And that's something that you want to stay and account for early on. Additionally, even if you don't have any door in your hand, it's important as to whether or not the door is easy to use, if it's something that you'll be able to use if you draw, or something hard to use, like an honor tile, then a single one's not going to matter. You want to be able to account for that Dora and keep it up, you know, keep it in mind throughout the entire game. That way you don't get blindsided if you draw it on the sixth discard or something like that. Next up is hand speed. This is even particularly relevant if you're the dealer in all lasts, since you can just keep Ren Chanting if you're lucky enough to do so until you're in the position you want to be in. There's uh, two basic topics for how fast the hand is, the first being just Shanten. We've heard the term before from pretty much all of us here, uh, but Shanten is simply how many tiles our hand needs to be in Tenpai. It's fairly straightforward, and it's the sort of thing that you'll want to practice counting as you play more to understand exactly how far your hand is from Tenpai, how far it is from winning. The next one's a bit more nebulous, and it takes a lot more experience to do, um, but we want to look at the quality of the shapes in our hands. Now, we all know that having a reach on an open weight like a 3-4 Rionman is kind of ideal, but along the way it still matters a lot too. So if you want to maximize the speed of your hand, you're looking for those Rionman, as I mentioned, or even extended Rionman shapes, such as a 3 4 5 6 7, which is waiting on three different tiles. 334, which has potential to be a pair, a triplet, or even just a run there, or 3445, where you can discard the four and make just a 345 shape, or draw anything 2, 3, 5, 6, or even a four to make a pair to improve that shape. The more flexible a shape is, the faster you're likely to make it to Tenpai. Conversely, if you have a lot of penchons and conchons and terminal tiles, um, penchons and conchons being a 9 8 for a penchon waiting on the seven, or a 1 3 waiting on the two for a conchon then your hand is going to be much slower on average. And this is important because it allows us to better evaluate whether or not we need to open up our hand if we need to be able to win this hand. The slower it is, the more likely we will need to open to win this hand. If the hand is a bit slower like that, a lot of times, especially with terminal tiles, we'll need to look at different Yakuhai and that sort of thing to make sure we have some way of winning the hand. Now, typical hand value is something that's a bit more difficult to judge sometimes. What we need to do to look at typical hand value is just take a look at your starting hand, counting the door is an excellent start there, and then just trying to figure out what Yaku this is likely to end up being. Some of them, like Tanyao, Pinfu, Honitsu, and Dora, are very easy to predict. If you start the hand with three Dora, then you know that at the end of the day, you're probably going to have at least a Mangan in your hand. Some of them are pretty stable. Things like Toy Toy and Yaku High you can commit to pretty early, and then Reach is just sort of that one you can always fall back on if there's any problems. But some are a little bit harder to predict. Things like Chinitsu, um, a full flush, uh, can be very far away from Tenpai at the beginning, so trying to go that route can be a little bit more difficult. Things like Sanshoku tend to not necessarily work out the right way either. Same with Itsu, just because there's nine different tiles that you need all to align in order to make that sort of hand. So if you're looking for some kind of reliable hand when you're working on your positional play, you're going to want to go for one of those first seven or so. Now, as I mentioned a bit before, uh, league really does change a lot here. So when we're looking at the hand value, we need to account for that league UMA bonus. And we're kind of borrowing from the EV strategy a little bit here. So let's take an example. If you're going to gain 20,000 from UMA, so again, that's that 1030, just moving up one place, and you would make the plus 20,000 from just a 5,200 point hand, but then no UMA on a much easier 3,900 point hand, the 5,200 is actually worth it the vast majority of the time. If you have a 10% chance to make that 5,200 point hand that would move you up a place, that is going to be better overall for your league score than a 60% chance of making a 3,900 point hand. So really at the end of the day, what that means is that taking risks can often be worth it, and you should definitely evaluate based on the rank a lot more often than not. And like I said, all this comes into the mental aspect of it, the objective that we have for positional play. It's important to be realistic, but, you know, we can't necessarily overcome a 60,000 point difference with a direct hit to take first or anything like that. 
I know some of us might have stories where it happened and everything, but generally speaking, that isn't the norm for our Mahjong games here. But at the same time, we don't want to set goals too low. If we're in fourth and we just say, oh, I just want to win a hand this game, really that's not going to be good for our overall value, especially in things like leagues and tournaments. So you don't necessarily want to take a look, take a win that doesn't improve your placement. Um, you really want to look for the improvement based on what we just saw in the last slide. So I want to go over a couple examples, and this is just me. We're not at the audience participation section yet, um, of just different ways that I look at objectives, that I look at dispositional play. So the first one, let's say we're in East 3. We already passed our deal, so we were the very first dealer. And the last dealer just sumoed two Hanemons. At this point, we are 48,000 behind. So the objective of making first that we usually start Mahjong games with isn't the sort of thing that we want to necessarily continue through at this point. Since we're 48,000 behind, that's going to be a very, very tough hill to climb. So instead, we want to play slated towards making second a bit more. So that way, we're not just, you know, thinking, all oh, first is too far to reach, we don't need to worry about that or anything like that, but we set an achievable goal and it's something to target of hitting that second place. Next example is South 4. We're in third, first place is 7,500 points ahead of us, second is 900 ahead, and fourth is just 3,000 points behind. So pretty close race, first being a little bit farther out there. In this situation, you generally want to target a quick hand to steal second unless you happen to have a very fast mung gun. Letting fourth catch up is very risky, and just making a thousand point hand is generally easy enough. That's the sort of thing we want to go for. The last example I have here is South Four. We have, we're in fourth place, but we have two Dora in hand. Third is 300 points ahead, second is 3,800 points ahead, and first is 10,200 ahead. Obviously, we're not in a good place here, but instead of dwelling on that, we want to focus on exactly what we can do to improve our position. Typical in this sort of situation would be to go for second place. Since two Dora and any Yaku is enough to overtake second, it's generally the sort of thing we'd want to go for. First, though, is a little bit out of reach. Even if we make a Mangan and Sumo it, as long as first isn't the dealer, that isn't going to be enough to catch up. So that's the sort of thing that I'm looking at when I'm thinking positional play. We have all these different aspects, all these different scoring uh, aspects, all the speed aspects, and it's all culminating into just this right here. So at this point, does anyone have any questions on what I mean when I'm talking about object talking about uh, positional play? This objective is pretty much the core concept that we're about to get into participation and let you guys kind of talk through the objectives that you have. Uh, yeah, bitmap. That's generally the sort of route that you want to go. You do have to be concerned a bit more with defense as well, though. That's one thing I didn't necessarily talk about too much. But let's say you're in first going in, and you are just 900 points ahead a second. That's the sort of thing where you don't necessarily need points to make up you know, to the next rank, but you will generally want to make a quick hand to avoid second stealing your hand. Conversely, if you are, say, 16,000 points ahead, the thing that you're mainly worried about is the in. So instead of trying to make a quick hand and ending the game right there, you'll want to instead play as defensively as possible to avoid dealing in, since generally speaking, that's the only way you'll lose your place at that point. Thank you for the question. Is there anyone else? All right, we are going to go ahead and move into audience participation then. Um, Mods, could you please select someone to be my first participant? I unmuted David Tor, the pride of New York City. Joy. All right. Now, real quick, David, sorry. Uh, before you start, I just got a question from Taylor as well. So how does your starting win position affect your calculations? So that's kind of an interesting concept. Obviously, you need to worry about which Yaku high and all that, but that's just standard Yaku that we don't need to worry about too much. Um, usually, if I'm not the dealer for South 3 or South 4, I need to play a lot more aggressively in South 1 and 2 in order to make up for any difference that I might have, because I just don't have the option to wrench on over and over um, near the end of the game in order to make up rank. So by turning on that aggression a little bit sooner than that graph that I had earlier might have indicated, you give yourself a better chance of making up for that uh, deficiency. All right, David. So 
what I'm going to do right now is we are going to take a look at a situation that I have had in a game. Um, and I want you to evaluate based on the different concepts I've just had here. What the score situation is, what our hand value looks like, what our hand speed looks like, and what your overall objective is going to be. Sound good? Okay. So without any further ado, let's take a look right here. Now this is actually from the Reachy Out tournament. So it's very important, like I said, to understand the format you're playing in. And in the Reachy Out tournament, first place is the only thing that matters. So that's our target in this situation right here. Go ahead and take it away. Cool. <clears throat> so you have a distinct advantage of just being in East. So basically winning any hand, if you feel like you don't have enough value, you could always just um, basically win any hand and try again. And your delt is actually fairly slow. Um, there's a potential for Toy Toy, there's a potential for Ubuntu, there's a potential for just like Naku, but like, I don't have any obvious path here. So for me, like, I would actually need, like, I would actually just be pushing for the fastest possible hand, just, be, just based on the position you're in, due to um, just basically having another chance. Like, if a Mangan happens to come along, that's great, but right now you're looking probably at around the 2,900 point hand. Isn't going to be enough, but that's probably going to be Okay. The one thing that I didn't quite hear, so we have three home on the table right now. We got past this deal. So that does kind of help out the idea of uh, the fast hands just a little bit, since these hands are already worth 900 points more than they would be otherwise. You pretty much nailed it with the expected score for this hand. Uh, we have one Dora with those three home on the table. So 2,600 base plus the extra points should be about 3,500. The good news is if we can sumo that sort of hand, we can actually overtake second just in one shot. But obviously, like I said in the title, first place is the only thing that matters here. So thank you very much, David. I appreciate it. Um, I want one more person to do that same analysis here real quick, just to see if there's any differences here. So mods, please select one more person and take a look at this. I have unmuted Emrita Shower, but he has personally muted himself. So Emrita Shower. Right, right, right. Gotcha. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and take it away. Okay, yeah, so um, similar story with David here. Um, you're about uh, 10k away from first with three home ball, but um, seeing how the point spread is fairly close, um, there, there's a, I would just basically go for the fastest hand I can and see how it develops. Um, at the, because, like I said, I don't see any noticeable pattern you have one dora you have maybe seven eight nine sanshoku but that would require drawing a lot of lucky tiles um i would just play this as efficiently as i can and try to wrench up all right sounds completely reasonable to me um i don't see any reason not to just go for the quick hands here in the game i ended up discarding the north wind to start out and i believe followed by the white dragon if i recall correctly just to try to keep the uh, central tiles and terminals intact as much as possible um, in reality, I actually ended up being extremely lucky, like you mentioned there. Um, I ended up with the Sanshoku as well as the Dora, um, and ended up reaching as well to make a dealer Mangan, which was enough to overtake first. Um, obviously, that's the sort of thing you can't necessarily rely on all in one shot, but it's the sort of thing you need to keep an eye out for as you're developing your hand more and more. Um, once I drew the, I believe it was the 7 Mon, it was the sort of thing that was definitely uh, full go, since you have the shapes that you need to make the Sanshoku at that point. So thank you very much. We'll move on to the next example here. All right, so Mods, could I please have another participant? Edwin will be our next participant. All right, Edwin, welcome. Um, so very similar situation to the last one um, as far as the rules go. Um, it's the same tournament, so first place is the only thing that matters here, and we don't have any uh, red fives. So go ahead and take it away. Are you with us, Edwin? If Edwin maybe is away from his computer, I can select another participant. I'm going to select Steve. All right, Steve, welcome. Go ahead and take it away. Well, this one you've got a lead of about 9,000. You're definitely among unsumable out of first itself for if you don't want that to happen here. And I'm assuming the player, your, your Kamicha is going to try for that. Um, so this hand has the uh, three Yan men already, a couple good floaters, and um, the uh, east is particularly worrisome because it's the Dora, even though it's your own wind. So I would probably aim to make this into a Pinhu or force Tanyao out of it. Um, 
and try to be as fast as possible. That way I would even consider dropping the East on the first turn so no one else can make use of it, even though it's your own wind. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Steve. Uh, just like before, we're going to ask one more person to take another look at this, just to see if there's any differences there. Mods, could I have one more person, please? I have unmuted Andre. All right, Andre, welcome. What do you got? I, I'd be really just worried about not, not dealing in. Right, so I agree with the assessment of chucking, chucking the super dangerous east uh, instead of trying to hold on it for value and go, go for the hand with efficiency, like leverage your round men, probably Infu, hoping some, some other tile, some other group goes out of, of, of the two so or another middle, middle tile when they draw. All right, sounds good to me. Yeah, as usual, you guys pretty much nailed it. Um, so I did lead out with the East discard on the first one, just kind of with the expectation that if someone did call it, at the very least, I know who I need to play around. If it ends up being my Kamicha, then I need to go ahead and play very, very aggressively. But if it's anyone else, generally speaking, I just need to avoid dealing in, like you said. Um, so discard that there and pretty much proceed normally from that point. All right, great. So moving on to a slightly different format here. So this is a tournament. It was played with WRC rules, so there are no red fives, and the UMA is 15 and 5. Um, I didn't include my placement in the tournament for this one. Um, I figured it wasn't particularly relevant, so we'll kind of maximize it, just saying we want to make the most points in the tournament as, as we can, as opposed to being, for example, the last round of a tournament or something like that. Um, so mods, could I please have someone to evaluate this hand for me? I have server unmuted Mizder, so if Mizder, you want to come off mute and try this one out, you can feel free. All right, take it away. Are you here with us? If Mr's having problems too, I'll unmute Max. Max, you're up. Okay, so first thing I see when I look at this, it's south four. We are down 4,100 points. So any th uh, 3 and 30 sumo is good enough, or a uh, 3 and 40 hit off of not, not the dealer. Um, 2 and 30, unfortunately, does not do it for us on a direct hit, so we need to make something a bit interesting with 2 and 40. Um, going from there, we don't have a whole... And then, uh, last week with placements, we are 11,900 points up on third place, so I'm not particularly worried about losing uh, my placement to a Hanuman, though it's definitely something to be... Uh, a bit worried about if you start seeing a lot of value come in from our Shimacha. So what I, then when I look at the hand, I see like we don't necessarily have a whole lot of value here, um, but there's a bit that we could hope to make. We could hope to make like a five, six, seven Sanshoku. We could hope to draw an Peridora, or we could just hope for just reach something Sumo. Um, and in light of that, I think I would proceed forward with the plan of not calling the tunes if it came out. All right, sounds good. Um, as usual, mods, one more person, please. I unmuted Taylor. Taylor, do you want to try this one? Um, so I agree with everything that Max said, um, and one um, addition I would make to that is um, since uh, the best way for us to um, add value onto this hand is to reach e, um, I would be probably trying to hold on to um, the Yakuhai tiles uh, to use as a pair, um, because in the event that we reach in Calderon, um, the extra Fu will upgrade us um, to 40 Fu, um, which means that the rest of our hand doesn't really have to be as fancy. Um, you know, there are a few potential Sanshoku options here, but um, we're pretty far away from them all. Um, and similarly, um, even though we have the 4-7 Mon as like kind of a Suji interval away mm -hmm. from each other, which is normally very inefficient, um, the potential for trying to get any Sanshoku wherever we find it, um, so in case we attach like a 3 or a 5 to the 4, um, I would be interested in hanging on to both the 4 and the 7. Um, to because our uh, Pinzu block is so large, um, to potentially 
go for either Sanshoku if we were to get it. So my first discard from this would probably be the one so. All right, sounds great. So in reality, in the game, I actually made a pretty big mistake with this one. Um, the hand actually progressed in a fantastic manner. You know, I cut the Hatsu and the one so very early on. Um, actually ended up cutting the pair of Chun too, and I made it to Tenpai for a Pinfu Sanshoku Tanyo. Now the problem was, just because I didn't have necessarily a clear objective in my mind, I decided that I was going to wait, uh, because I only had the Sanshoku on one side of the wait. Um, so I figured that rather than, you know, have to take a win off of one of my players to my right here, um, that I would rather stay Dama and just have the potential to win off of anyone that completes the Sanshoku making a Mangan. Um, however, what I didn't account for is sumoing the other side of that Sanshoku. So unfortunately, I didn't reach, and I sumoed the wrong side for a 3,900-point hand, or, well, as the sumo, it's just barely not quite enough uh, to take over the dealer. Um, so unfortunately, I made a little bit of a mistake there because I wasn't clear on my objective. I wasn't clear on exactly what score I needed early on, and I just sumoed too quickly to correct the mistake. So that just kind of goes to show that we really, really want to make sure that we understand what we need to do very early on. All right, thank you both. Moving on, we have another one from the same tournament. Um, so same WRC rules, everything there. Um, could I have another participant, please? We have selected Bitmap as the next participant. Bitmap, you're up. Hi. Uh, okay. So we're in South 4, and we're, is the goal trying to just gain as much points as possible because it's a tournament? Yeah, pretty much tournament format, not worrying about that 15 and 5 UMA. Okay. Uh... Hmm, I'd probably go for, um, I, I probably would try to go for, like, maybe a, um, a Pinfu Tanya Reach. Uh, it seems like probably easiest way to just get a lot of points initially. Uh, probably would try to discard the North and uh, the Nine, uh, well, see, I don't know, I don't know if it's, like, if, uh, discarding a nine pin is good because you do have the seven, but it could be uh, if you just if you draw a six, you can uh, wait for a five a uh, five pin or eight pin. Um, in that in this case, I would just see like see what I can do and try to just go for uh, Pinfu, possibly Tanya, but definitely with like a reach to try to pressure people and try to build this hand as fast. We are currently eight down eight thousand from second no from third place so uh, ideally we would try to get at least a monk on all right sounds great thank you bitmap for the analysis there this is a much harder one i forgot to preface that um, just because we are in such a bad position here um so let's take another person to take a look at this as well what do we got i've unmuted point blanket point blanket if you want to take yourself off mute and give it a try go ahead Hello. Oh, can you all hear me Yes, we can. Cool. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty unfortunate situation, like your preface. Um, uh, from third place, we're like a little bit over 8,000. And from second place, we're a little bit over 12,000. So we can't. Um, there has to be like some direct hits to actually change placements here. Or we have to sumo. Um, our starting hand is pretty far from any value. So I feel like you're looking for you know, some kind of far away miracle draws to either get like a Chinitsu and like pray for Montile or maybe like a Sanshoku to form or emerge somewhere or you're praying for Lucky Dora. Um, I think similarly, you're just kind of trying to get good draws. Actually, I guess the Itsu is the best potential shape here. So I think the dream here would be to get something like, you know, Richi Pingfu Itsu Tsumo which would get you the value needed to change placements and get you the most uh, point potential, I guess, in placements. Okay, sounds great. Yeah, you pretty much nailed it on the head there. Um, as we've mentioned, this is not necessarily a good position to be in by any means, um, but we do have some potential value. I think the Itsu is a good way to go. Unfortunately, the Honitsu is a little bit too far away, so that's the sort of thing we don't necessarily want to go for. But at the same time, if we start with discarding the Northwind probably by the one two so um it is possible that we just draw nothing but montiles and leaving us open to that sort of thing is a good route to go with this sort of hand a lot of people if they see a you know good chunk of montiles like that and they really want to go for a whole need to 
but in reality we to get a whole new tune most of the time we're gonna have to open up our hand here and if we open up our hand then we can't really get more than about 3900 points so that's the sort of thing where this positional play is so important we want to keep this hand closed we want to plan on reaching and go for the manga like our two analyzers have managed to take a look at here so fantastic analysis by both of you here really appreciate it and we'll move on to our last example here we are exiting the world of Mahjong tournaments, and we are just on my standard ladder. So in Tenho, as you guys may or may not know, all you care about is placement. The main objective is generally just to get out of last place, um, but with the way the points work, you gain points on second and first, you're zero on third, and you lose a lot of points on fourth. Um, so with that preface, let's get one more person to take a look at this. Alright, I am going to unmute Cassie for this one. Cassie, why don't you give it a shot? Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, well, um, oh no, the thing disappeared. Uh, sorry. <laughs> there we go, got it. Okay, um, so let's see. Well, the first thing I notice is I can't do math, but I think we're about a manga on away from uh, third place here. Um, let's see, who is East? Uh, looks like our Kamicha is, so that's cool. Um, well, so the things I notice is that we have a 1 Mon, which is close to the 2 Mon, which is Dora, which is cool. Um, let's see, there's also an interesting possibility that probably wouldn't work out all that well, but, uh, we could also just let Kamicho win and try to get a better hand, but that would put them further ahead uh, and make it harder. Currently, we're in Mongon range, but uh, looking at this, I would probably try to get rid of the Yaku High tiles. Um, I don't see them going anywhere, but I could be. Well, hmm. sorry, this is a bit of a meandering. No, uh, take your time. Yeah. Let's see. We do have like some good possibilities in the Mon tiles. Like there is the Actually now that I think on it, we are like closer to Honitsu than we were in the previous one, though it's still kind of messy. But uh if we did go for Honitsu, possible Yakuhai, Dora, that would be enough. Uh we wouldn't um but that's still kind of a stretch. Um, yeah, I think I would... Uh, it's also possible to go for Tanya here, uh, though it's still fi you have to discard five terminals and honors, and then you'd be giving up the advantage of like having the one which is close to the two mon. Um, so I could see several ways to go. I'd probably personally go for the Honitsu, but I tend to go for risky things anyway. The There is the issue that that is slow. But, like, um... Yeah. I think, uh, I'd probably stay closed and go for the Honitsu. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah, great analysis to start out there. Um, again, another pretty bad situation overall, 7,100 points down from the dealer. Um, yeah, so thank you for your input there. Uh, mods, can we have one last person, please, to analyze this as well? The mods are going to call on the other mods. Pio, you're up. All right, Pio, what do you got? Uh, let's see. Um, so, yeah, so I know Tenno is all about last place avoidance, and so that's exactly what we have to go for here. Um, you are within uh, long gun range as... Um, who who was that that said that before? Cassie? Cassie said that before. And so you can sumo the mangan or you can roam because um the guy's the guy's dealer, so you can go into reach if you have a four um if you have what, four and thirty? Um that should be enough. And so I'm thinking yeah, maybe like like Bitmap saying maybe um Ipeko, but um you can do like reach reach Ipinfu Dorani. And I think that's the hand you should go for, because if you pawn one of the the wins, then you have to open you have to open your hand, and then now you're probably relegated to like Haku or Hatsu uh, Dorani, and that's only that's only three, 
and I don't that I don't think that's that's not enough. And so I would start by um, cutting the the pay, and then eventually the other two honors, and then go for um, either reach Pinfu Dorni or uh, it may be if you don't draw the Dora, then you go for um, what Richi Pinfu um, Ipeko. Um, Dora one or like Richie Pinfu, um, Richie Pinfu Dora one Panyao, and that's probably how I would go about it. Um, and this court order would be like North, and then the other two honors, and then would and then we would have to see what what we get from there. At least that's okay. what I think. Awesome, thank you very much for the input, Pio. Yeah, in the game here, I did see the possibility of the Honitsu, but I thought that the simple tiles were generally going to be a little bit better. So I started with the pay discard. Now, as we've talked about a little bit, my objective here is just to take over third. I'm not even worried about second since they're almost 20,000 points off. Um, but moving along, I actually drew a pair of the Dora as well. Um, so with a pair of the Dora in hand, I have three Dora with the Akadora there. Pinfu, Tanyao, and then Reach as well. So I ended up with a Hanemon chance, and then I also got the Patsu Sumo for a Baimon. Obviously, that's the sort of thing that you can't necessarily rely on in a lot of cases, but it just kind of shows that the early discards really make a lot of sense to allow yourself the opportunity to get lucky like that. So even though we're down so far, the dealer could just get farther and farther away if they win hands. By evaluating, understanding that whole needs to is probably going to be a little bit slow starting with the pay, we can end up building towards a hand that does give us the best possibility to take over the positions here. All right, so that's all I have for our presentation today. I want to thank all of you for joining me, and we have a little while here just for any final questions that anyone might have. All right, so we do have one question about the last Mahjong Soul hand. So that's this one right here. Um, potentially forcing Honi, or sorry, Chinitsu could work. The problem is if you force the Chinitsu, then it's a very readable hand, and you need to either sumo it or have the player to your right or the player across Mew deal in. So a lot of times, if you try forcing a Chinizu from this far away, you have the issue where if people just fold, you're going to make it to Ryokoku. Even if you're in Tenpai, just being in Tenpai at the end here and getting the no ten payments is not going to be enough. So that's the only yeah. concern I would have with that one. Yeah, my reasoning on this is that, um, so like I said, just based on the point spread, um, it's basically very hard to even get Richie Pinfu because of the two, um, you have a 1-2 there and a 7-9 there, so you have to make some extremely lucky draws, but um, my reasoning was that Open Chinitsu might be a bit more flexible because at least you can call on tile. Otherwise, you're reliant on either like Richi, Pinfu, Sumo, Dora, Itsu, or like drawing a Dora pair, which might be a bit harder. Absolutely. And that's always the sort of thing you want to consider. And I'm not going to be the type of person that says, yes, there's a right way and a wrong way to look at the objectives here. So I definitely can't fault anyone for going for an open Chinitsu here. Um, it definitely makes a lot of sense. Thank you. And one thing uh, noted by Steve here is that when people see 7,000 points down, such as in this uh, ton, this uh, Tenho hand here, we need to be a little bit concerned. We don't necessarily need a Mangan, um, but if we sumo something like a 3 and 40 hand, it's the sort of thing that can still take over. Um, so an important thing to point out, sorry, 3 and 40 or 4 and 30, or sorry, I can't do math right now, 4 and 20. Um, so it's definitely the sort of thing we need to keep an eye out for, since that 4 and 20 is something that's very achievable with just Pinfu Reach Dora Sumo. Steve, I took you off mute if you have any comments you want to add to that. No, that's about it. I mean, there's there's other hands people miss with, with that. That's one. I mean, when people are uh, over 8K up and thinking they need a Mangan, um, Reach It Sumo Chi Toy works as well. That's 6,400 with 32 coming out. So that swings at nearly 10,000. I mean, Chi Toy is not everyone's best friend, but it might be easier than making a Mangan depending on the hand. Again, and one other thing noted by Light Pink Yoshi here is that if we do go for the Honitsu with this hand, the player who least wants us to complete that hand is the one who's dealing into us. So if they end up folding and not discarding any Manzu tiles, it's going to be very difficult to complete the hand. It's a great point there from Light Pink Yoshi. Do you have anything to add? Uh, not particularly. It's just like if they're playing correctly and just based off of knowing Tenho they should be at this lobby. Um, you're just never going to see a Monzu tile once you make it clear you're going Honitsu and there's no way to really hide it. 
absolutely. Very good point there. All right, so I think that's going to about draw to a close then. And once again, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to lecture to this fantastic group of people here. So with that, I will turn it back over to your fearless leader, Claire.